uh, kick off. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming to this year's uh, MyTech's Global Research Award info session. My name is Lily, Senior International Specialist at the International Office, University of Saskatchewan. It's a great honor to partner with uh, MyTech's as well as our sister unit, International Student and Study Abroad Center to organize this info session. Um, so at first we would like to start with the uh, land acknowledgement. I acknowledge that we live and work on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. I also acknowledge the indigenous lands and relationships of our partners from across Canada and around the world. So um, we would like to kind of let you know, like for today's uh, session, uh, we will start with a presentation. Ms. Rachel Song will walk over the, um, the entire, like talk about the uh, Global Research Award, especially the current thematic call, the specifics, and also answer your questions with the support from Dr. Shusa Pap both of uh, our friends here and also especially some of you have worked very closely with Shusa in the past. So don't hesitate if you have any questions, uh, uh, you could type in the chat box and also during the Q&A and discussion session, uh, we will monitor. And then we also very fortunate to invite International Education Officer Chantal Hansen from our sister unit, I said, to also talk about the services provided to inbound and outbound global awardees. And also, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. We're here to support you and answer your questions. So I'm going to uh, uh, pass over, just uh, give a sec. Let me uh, introduce... Um, uh, Rachel and Shusa. Um, okay. So we are very fortunate to invite Ms. Rachel Song. It's a senior advisor in business development with MyTex to meet with us and uh, talk about the program specifics. She works with various stakeholders in industry and academia to identify the appropriate funding opportunities for R&D projects. She has supported projects of various sizes, ranging from four months to multi-year collaborations and connected companies with the appropriate academic expertise to solve their R&D challenges. We also have our old friend here, Dr. Susan Pap, is the MyTech Senior Advisor for the University of Saskatchewan. She facilitates applied research collaborations across all disciplines and sectors. Prior to joining MyTech, she was a project manager at Environment and Climate Change Canada, and before that, conduct postdoctoral research and extensively published in the field of life and environmental sciences. She's also a PhD of the USASC. So now I pass over to Rachel. Thank you. Thanks so much for the lovely intro. I will just share my screen. Can you see that okay? Yes, yeah, see that okay. I can show Okay, right, perfect. Yeah, so thanks so much for having us here today. Um, as Lane mentioned, my name is Rachel Sung, and I'm a senior advisor in business development at MyTex. And of course, I have my colleague, Jujar Pak, here, um, who's also a senior advisor in business development at MyTex. And today, we are going to be going over the Global Link Research Award thematic call for 2022. Um, so here's just an agenda and brief overview of what we're going to be covering today in our presentation. Um, so firstly, going over um, our different Global Link programs. Um, and also focusing on the GRA thematic call, the specific features and details, and sorry, also going over the international partners that are participating this year. And then also be going over the application process and how you can access the application package. And then finally, I'm um, just going over the full timeline of how the process looks like from start to finish. And of course, we'll have some time at the end for any questions. 
Um, so just starting off with a quick overview of MyTax. For those of you who aren't familiar with MyTax, we are a national non-for-profit organization that provides funding and support to foster collaboration and innovation across Canada and internationally as well. So through our funding programs, we bring together a number of different stakeholders, including post-secondary institutions, industry partners, and non-for-profits to help build and push forward the Canadian innovation ecosystem. So under our Global Link um, series of programs, which you may have heard of before, um, we have two main programs. One is the Global Link Research Award, or GRA, and the other is the Global Link Research Internship, or GRI. So today we'll be going over um, the details um, all about GRA. For those of you who are curious or aren't familiar with GRI, it is um, a summer cohort program. So basically that program brings in international students into Canada um, over the summer to do a research project with a Canadian professor or uh, and a Canadian academic institution. Um, so today I'm going to be going, going over specifically the thematic call um, for this year for GRA. Um, so here are some of the main details about the program. So the call is open from September 20th to November 25th, and the funding and program supports a project for 12 to 24 weeks, and it has to be a research internship, meaning that this is between a, a project between a Canadian institution and an international institution. Um, so for this specific thematic call, um, we have a bilateral travel direction, so both inbound and outbound. Um, inbound meaning an international student can come to Canada to do a research project, and then outbound meaning a student at a Canadian institution can travel abroad to an international university to do a research project. In terms of funding amount, um, the award is valued at $6,000 for the 12 to 24 weeks. However, if you work with some certain international partners, they may offer uh, additional type of funding as well. In terms of the number of interns you can include on a project, it can be anywhere in between one to five students on a project. Um, the call is open nationally across all universities in Canada for all universities that are Tory Council eligible. Um, it is also a theme based and competitive call, and we do have 19 international partners participating this year in the thematic call, which is very exciting. Um, and each project has to include um, one of these MyTax international partners. So in, in terms of the research themes that are covered um, and um, open to for this thematic call, um, we have four main categories, um, advanced computing, which include AI and quantum technologies, clean technologies, um, global health, and then finally we have an open theme, um, social and scientific innovation. Um, so my text has kept these themes pretty broad and inclusive. So pretty much any projects um, under any discipline could be submitted under this thematic call. Um, so here are the list of the 19 partners that we have participating in the call this year. So, you know, we've got partners from Brazil, France, Germany, um, Korea, Mexico, South Africa, United Kingdom. And there are specific um, eligibility criteria for each of these um, international partners, which I'll um, go over in a little bit more detail and show you where to get all that information. But as an example, um, so for example, for France, we have multiple international partners. So here are two of them, the French Embassy in Canada and University Université de Lorraine. Um, so some eligibility criteria you might need to pay a little bit more closely attention to include the travel direction. So for example, for French Embassy, um, we're only allowing students traveling from Canada, whereas University de Lorraine, you can travel both inbound and outbound. And um, relative to that, you also have to double check the intern level. Um, so for example, French Embassy includes all levels of interns, but for um, University, de, University de Lorraine, you have um, different levels of students for inbound versus outbound. So something to keep in mind. Um, also to look for if um, the international partner kind of involves multiple universities is to see whether you, the university you plan to work with is on our list as well. And then finally, um, there may be also other specific requirements um, specific to the partner that you may need to pay attention to. So for example, French Embassy, you can only have up to two students on a project. And then for UL, um, you'll need to get their approval for your project prior to submission as well. Um, so I'll just quickly switch to our website to show you where you can find all this information. I'm um, just confirming you can still see my screen. Yes, yeah, we see this. All right, thank you. 
Um, yeah, so this is the main uh, page for our global increase your work, uh, work no matter call. Um, there, there is a link on our slide deck as well, which will lead you here. Um, so basically, we have like the main about page here where you can find the deadline um, and then an overview about the global link program and the themes that are uh, research themes that are involved this call. And then, of course, the 19 partners that we have. Um, so to find the specific eligibility requirements for each of the international partners, you can just click on the international partners tab information tab here. Um, and you'll see the, the 19 partners listed here. And then if you want to learn more about one of them, you just have to click and then it'll release a drop down where you can find all of the um, eligibility requirements here. So um, just please double check that you meet those requirements. Um, and if you're not sure, of course, you can reach out to me and Jujan. and we're happy to um, help and double check that for you. Um, and then in terms of the application process and how you can um, access the application package. Um, so to access the application package, you will need to fill out a um, web form on our website to request it. And on there, it'll, it'll ask you some questions such as, um, you know, what which research theme you plan to apply under and which international partner you're planning to apply with as well. And then um, what will happen is my test will let Zuja know that you are interested in applying and then she will be in touch with you to just kind of double check and go over the eligibility requirements before she shares the application package with you. Um, and then just to go back and show you how you can access the web form. So um, I believe they will be you know, sh sharing the slide deck later. So you can just click directly on the link here, um, which will take you to the website that I was um, just at, which is the thematic call main site. And then you just have to go to the how to apply tab. And then here it'll break down the full application process here for you. And then you can access the web form to request for the package by clicking on this link. Um, and then it will take you through some questions that you need to answer to, to um, request the package. Okay, um, so just to let you know what's included in the application package. Um, so there are four main documents. So firstly, we have a fillable uh, PDF form, which is basically information about the intern, the Canadian supervisor, the international supervisor, and you'll also need to um, sign on that form as well. Um, and then there's a, a Word document form, which is the research proposal, where, where you'll be required to outline in more detail um, the research that the intern is planning to do. And then there's also a pre-departure form and a code of conduct and ethics form um, that doesn't actually need to be submitted by the deadline, but has to be submitted before um, the intern attends to travel. And then finally, just to just give an overview of what everything looks like in terms of timeline. Um, so we have the call open on September 20th. Um, and then on we have uh, University of Saskatchewan has set up an internal deadline for November 15th at 5 p.m. Um, so you will need to send your applications to the international office at this email um, for a full review. And then Lei will also kindly help you to set up your files in the research management system, um, help you complete the internal review procedure and obtain um, the University of Saskatchewan's approval and signature. Um, and then for once you've done all of that and finalized the application. The full application will need to be submitted to Zhuja um, on November 24th at 5 p.m. Um, to get ready for submission um, into my tax for November 25th. Um, and then uh, in terms of how long it takes for review and the turnover time, we're anticipating that outcome letters are going to be sent out to applicants by March or April. Um, and then once you confirm your acceptance, you'll receive the official award letter. And then once interns have also provided the pre-departure forms, um, MyTax will release the funds to the university and then interns can start, start their travel probably around May time. Um, if interns want to travel a bit, little bit later, that's okay as well. Um, they, can, they have up to a year to start um, their internship. So some things that may affect this timeline is um, depending if your application requires revisions or if you didn't um, send in complete documentation by the time of submission, that might adjust this timeline a little bit. Um, but, you know, myself, Leia and Zhuja will be around to help you through the application process and make sure that you have everything ready before submission um, to hopefully prevent these delays from, from occurring. 
So yeah, that's pretty much it from um, our end. Uh, so thank you so much for your attention. Uh, feel free, of course, to reach out to uh, Juju or myself if you have any questions about eligibility, et cetera. Um, and yeah, of course, we have some time for questions. So happy to, happy to take those now. Thank you, Rachel. So yeah, I'm sure Leia, when you have a look at the uh, website or maybe you have some plans in mind in terms of travel. So please uh, let us know the question you have. So now we have a question with uh, uh, Renly Yuan. So uh, thanks for sharing. And I want to ask, uh, so just give me a sec. Uh, GRE only opens to Canadian citizens. So this is the first question. Um, maybe Rachel, would you like to answer? Sure, yeah, no, that's a great question. So the program is open to both um, international and Canadian students. So international students from Canada can also um, travel and apply for the Global Research Award Program as well. Thank you, Rachel. And the second question is, uh, is the travel cost only include in 6,000? And if a selected, uh, uh, if, if this person needed to report to RICC, so that's for Visa Processing Center. Um, sorry, could you repeat that? I don't think I understood the last part. Sure. The second yeah. question is uh, basically the student want to ask uh, if uh, if uh, the travel expenses be included in the six thousand award. Yeah, so um, the 6000 includes um, stipend and then travel costs or any research expenses related to the project. Um, and then on the application, you will be asked to budget out how much you plan to use for each part. Thanks, Rachel. And the last question from... Uh, oh, sorry. Do you mind if I add something to the first question? Oh, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, just, just one comment to the first question. So... Uh, if, if the student is international, then there is a limitation that they cannot go back to the same country where they are from. So they have to be Canadian citizen or permanent residents. Resident, then they can go anywhere. But if, if a student, let's say, is French from France and they don't have permanent residency in Canada, we cannot pay them on GRE to go back to France, for example. It's just, just um, I, I wasn't sure what the situation was of that in particular international student. I just thought I'd clarify that part. Yeah, no, yeah, thanks for writing that. Yeah, totally. That's a very important part to, to mention because Global in program is meant to provide opportunity for students to experience a different culture, right? Different academia environments. So, of course, like, yeah. Uh, for international students coming from the country, you cannot go back to your home country for this uh, experience. Um, the last question is, uh, if this uh, GRE application is successful, would the student need to report to IRCC? That is a good question. Um, what, does, what does IRCC stand for? Uh, that's the uh, Immigration Canada, so they process a visa. So I guess the student question, maybe a student could clarify. My understanding is uh, uh, the first part of the question perhaps uh, is because student is currently on visa to reside in Canada. So there's uh, some residence requirement. So being away for like, for instance, three months, mm -hmm. uh, would that mean need yeah, I need to report to IRCC because there's some changes to the uh, visa status. But however, my, again, I'm not expert on that. Um, uh, we may need to further consult, but in my understanding, this is a research abroad, this research internship is part of the study. So it's part of a research program. That's my understanding because it's going to be approved by the supervisor, the department, and the uh, college as well. So, okay, so let's see if uh, Rachel, Shuzet, and Chantal, please weigh in as well. Yeah, it, I'll leave it to Chantal because we cannot uh, advise on immigration type of questions, unfortunately. So that would be something to ask them and Chantal might have um, colleagues who can confirm that. Yeah, so we do have to defer to our um, regulated international student international or immigration advisors. So we have two in our office right now. Um, the third has just started. So if there are questions about traveling abroad and what kind of visa 
you have, how to get back into the country for your program to continue your studies at USASC. Um, you can contact us about that. I'll put the international student email, um, international students at usask.ca. So that's the email that our immigration advisors oversee. So if there are questions about leaving Canada and returning, uh, you can direct those there and they answer those emails on a daily basis. So I can't really be much, much more help than that. So I hope that helps, but yeah. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Because each person's uh, situation is different, right? Had to, depends on the documentation on that. Yeah, that's awesome. So so really, please connect with the uh, ISAT Immigration Advisor to kind of like with your specific circumstances. Um, and then now we uh, go to uh, Sylvie's question. If my student doesn't prepare a degree in your list of partners uh, for the GRE gen general stream, uh, is the same deadline? Uh, maybe I quickly <laughs> respond first because that related to, for the general stream that related to the uh, agreement currently negotiated between MITEX and our University of Saskatchewan. Once that's in place, fully signed, uh, then we will release an internal call for applications. And then um, all the supervisors and the student encourage you to capture that opportunity. And we will, it's going to be a, a different kind of timeline because all depends on the, uh, the signing of the agreement and then also, again, the uh, process time. So with that general stream, I quickly mentioned, each year we'll receive quota from MyTax to select our internal applications. And then also for that, uh, unfortunately, MyTax won't be able to provide the uh, full 6,000 as the word. MyTax will provide 4,000. And then our USAS supervisor is required to provide 2,000 as the matching funds. So together to make up that 6,000 award. So now pass over to Susan and Rachel, see if uh, you would like to weigh in. Um, I, yeah, I think you answered that pretty well. So if for the general student stream, there, there's actually no deadline. Um, so you will be able to apply anytime. Um, we just recommend you typically apply around three to four months before you intend to travel. Um, but yeah, that, that would be for when you have the MOU in place, I guess. Thank you. So now we uh, look at the next question. So from Lorenzo, uh, thank you for the presentation. Could you please provide a little more detail on the uh, proposal format? So Rachel, would you like to start? Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, for the research proposal, I think it's mainly four, four main sections. Um, so there will be a section, the first section is usually background about your research project. So it will be kind of like, I guess, like a literature review of your project. Um, any previous literature or work that has been done in your research area, and then what your project is going to add um, towards the field, and, and obviously what you're also going to do during the internship. Um, there will also be a section for a student statement as well, so how going through the Global Link Research Award Program is going to benefit you um, in your career or your studies. Um, and I think there's also a section to describe in detail uh, what the interaction is going to look like with your with your international university or um, international supervisor, and also with your Canadian supervisor as well. Um, I think I think those are the main sections. Um, but I don't know if Juja wants to add anything that I might have missed. Okay. Thank you. Um, so let's look at the next question. Uh, thanks for answering the question. Um, one more question from the previous student uh, only. So as an international student, I can join a program such as in Germany, but not uh, this student's uh, home country, right? Yeah, yeah we're, all, we're, <laughs> we're all nodding the head, yes. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, so, so far, those are the questions we received. And also, Leia, uh, please feel free. This is a very safe space. And uh, any questions, if any doubts, like don't hesitate, uh, either type in the chat box or you could just raise your hand. Feel free to 
joining this uh, conversation. Or if at this point you just kind of have a partner in mind, uh, you're not sure where to start, um, also could share your thoughts with us. I'm just going to quickly mention previously when I worked with uh, some of the students on campus to pursue GRA program, some of the students uh, identify partners, especially the host institutions and host supervisor through the connection of their use as professors. Because basically a lot of time that's a very important network because your instructors here, your supervisors here understand who are the player uh, be the expert in their field, right? And then could give a recommendation for the specific activities you would like to conduct for the skills you want to develop, right? So then they might have good connections and then could recommend. That's one way. And then also my text also had a platform. You can kind of use uh, the platform, find a supervisor to look at uh, uh, at some institutions, some faculty members post their expertise there and then open to kind of possibility to receive interns. So that's a channel. And then also sometimes, uh, uh, again, just from my interaction with our USA students here, some just basically look at publications, they do their own search, and then they reach out, kind of introduce themselves, kind of mention what kind of program they're currently at, uh, what kind of research interest they have, and, and what would like to gain from this uh, research internship experience, right? And then just kind of present themselves, and then sometimes got match, because from that, even just that kind of uh, reach out, I have seen connection made with uh, like a world class, like a world renowned university, like with Oxford, with like some of the institutions you in the past, you might not really have inter interactions from your own circle here, but don't hesitate a lot of time, like um, a lot of around the world, a lot of universities are so open to internship, they're very used to uh, receiving visiting research students. So definitely take advantage of the opportunity. Um, so again, I'd uh, like to see if, uh, oh yeah, we have a received question from Steve. Um, no, not, not a question, just an apology that I have to oh. run, but this was, <laughs> this was really excellent. So thanks so much, Rachel, uh, Lee, and everyone. Thank you, Steve. Please encourage your students to apply. <laughs> Will do, definitely. Awesome, thank you. Bye. Bye, have a good afternoon. Yeah. So yeah. So and like, uh, if you have any kind of thoughts and idea, don't hesitate. You can just uh, raise your hand and to like use this opportunity, right? And also, as Rachel mentioned, for the uh, proposal, it's uh, it's kind of oh yeah. I also want to quickly mention one of the questions we received in the past is they felt like okay, so in a graduate program, I have for instance two year research program, and right now for this twelve week research activities. How should I present, right? Um, so maybe perhaps Rachel and Shusa want to give recommendation around that, how they kind of like present specific to kind of showcase, this is what they're going to achieve for 12 weeks, but this is a kind of also part of their, the entire uh, research program, two to three year research program. Any, any strategy they kind of should be aware of? Uh, maybe Rachel would like to start with. Um, sure. Uh, so, so the, I, I just want to clarify the, the question being how the, after the project, how the student can um, showcase their, their work that they've done. Um, so, so just out of curious, for instance, if a student already starts some research here at the University of Saskatchewan, and now only part of that research program will be conducted overseas, right? So how do they show, like sometimes they're wondering, okay, I need to talk about literature review, that's about the entire two to three year program, but that's very, very broad, very intensive. Um, should like, should a student be narrowed down only kind of present like literature related to the 12 week focus activities or how would that kind of they better show the big picture and then narrow down or do they just should be only talk about anything kind of within that kind of the box of the 12 week yeah good question um so i guess from the background information um that can be pretty broad in terms of like what has been already done in the field of the research in general. Um, but on the proposal, yes, there you will need to um, specify like what you'll be doing for those 12 to four weeks. Um, and then if you've already done some work 
previously on this project already at USAS, then yeah, I think that would be helpful to, to mention it as well. Um, but yeah, being clear on what you're going to be doing for the 12 to 24 weeks is going to be important. Thank you. Very insightful. Shusa, please. Wait. Yeah, the same, same. I might have the same comment basically as Rachel said. Uh, uh, sometimes, yeah, there is um, sometimes the um, um, opportunity people feel that they can talk about their whole thesis in that proposal, but really it is not necessary. Of course, you might want to put it in context. You put that 12 weeks in context, but I would say keep that short and focus on what the person is going to be doing in those weeks. So yeah, we, we really don't need to know the other parts of the objectives of their thesis. So we just concentrate on the parts that they're going to be doing during those two few weeks. Hi Merle, good to see you. Hey, Merle, please. Yeah, we. Uh, awesome. Yes, I have a question. I'm and I apologize. I was giving a presentation in another, so I'm late. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I'm still I'm still here. I, I saw when I came in that you guys were recording. Um, where is that going to be posted? Uh, very good question. So we are recording that uh, safe to the cloud. So then it's very fortunate we could have a link. So then in our next uh, international office uh, newsletter, we're going to include that. Yeah. And also, yeah, so I probably should mention, uh, put uh, also our email address here, just in case that uh, maybe some student may not be familiar with uh, listservs, uh, then they could just uh, send our office an email. Then I'm very happy to share the link. Yeah, that'd be super. Um, we could potentially consider and, and we can, you know, have a conversation about this, but I could potentially post it, um, like download it and post it to the Sure uh, uh, YouTube page because we've got, you know, an extensive number of videos on there. Um, so anyway, that's a thought um, we can consider. Thank you, Maru. That's a great tip. <laughs> if everyone here is okay with that, if you have any concerns, uh, uh, don't hesitate. You can email me. If you have concerns, then we see how we do it. Um, yeah, for sure. But I definitely, exactly, because always, like, there are always students and faculty members and research staff wanted to attend info sessions, but they might have other priorities or commitments, right? So that the recording, if it's a nice, YouTube channel, you already have subscribers. That's perfect platform for us to disseminate the info. Thank you. Yeah, and also, also want to thank Rachel and Shusa gave very good advice about how to ship your proposal exactly as uh, they kind of mentioned. How to be need to be specific, right? Need to really kind of focus on what the uh, we think that internship period what you need to achieve, and then with your entire research as a kind of context, we understand that. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, if we don't have any further question at this point, so I'm gonna invite Chantal. And then at the end, we again, still will have a Q&A discussion time. So if you, any, you need a little bit more time to processing thoughts and don't hesitate, and then you will still have lots of opportunity to raise your hand and, and then ask any questions. So we are also very happy to invite Ms. Chantal Hansen. Uh, in the uh, International Student and Study Abroad Center, we often call the acronym ISET. Um, uh, USAS here, so she's an international education officer, uh, support both inbound and outbound mobility in various capacities. Uh, so currently she oversees inbound exchange program amount um, other responsibilities. And also want to quickly mention, Chantal and I have been partnered together working on MyTex program for years. And then we also partnered together on other uh, student internship scholarship programs um, supported by federal government or crown corporations or, or NGOs. So we are a great team here. Thanks, Chantal. Thank you, Le. It's always great to cross paths with you. Um, thank you for the nice introduction as well. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to make sure I'm doing this properly. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, but just not a presentation mode. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna fix this here. One second, there we go. Just wanna make sure 
How's that? Uh, yeah. That's good. Okay. So as Le mentioned, I am an international education officer at the International Student and Study Abroad Center. So my role is right now primarily inbound uh, exchange student supports, but I also work with our, I worked with our outbound students as well. So uh, I just wanted to go through how we can support the outbound and inbound student mobility at USASC. So first for outbound students, um, all outbound students who are participating in a USASC funded or, or approved mobility are required to register in our international travel registry. So that's USASC managed and that's just a support that we provide to monitor locations where students are traveling in order to support them while they're abroad. We also monitor these locations for any emergency situations so we can provide adequate support to students. Within this, there's a pre-departure orientation for some students, depending on where they're going and what program they're participating in. And this just gives some, some information about uh, travel protocol, how to travel safely, et cetera. We also have an option for students who are participating in outbound mobility to participate in an introduction to intercultural communication modules. And these are located online in our Canvas plat platform. So students can enroll in this prior to participating in a mobility experience. And it provides them some guidance in terms of communicating interculturally and how to adapt to a different culture while abroad. Uh, as for in inbound supports, students coming to USASC as a uh, Global Link Research Award recipient would be registered as visiting research students. So ISAC and the College of Postgraduate and Postdoctoral Studies, CGPS, ensure that all students are admitted as visiting research students. So they would apply online and then receive a letter of admission, which they can then use for immigration purposes if needed. Uh, ISAC, our office, is also responsible for registering these students upon arrival. And that registration ensures that they have access to campus services and any training related to their research activities as well. ISAC and CGPS can also answer any questions related to the, the VRS application and student status as well, if there's any concerns about what students will have access to on campus or certain, certain services that they might need in terms of lab and uh, safety requirements as well. So with the visiting research student status, each student receives a student number and NSID that they can use to access campus services. They also pay student fees. So VRS students pay off campus student fees. There's a link to this that I can send in the chat light later if, if people want that information on hand. They also pay an $100 administrative fee for each term that they're registered. So in this case, because it's over the spring summer months, um, it, it would be over the spring and summer, which would be $50 per term split over those two terms. Uh, students can also pay a separate fee to access the pack if they're interested, and they can also pay a fee to receive the bus pass uh, if that's available during those semesters. And VRS students also obtain a student card while they're here. As for arrival supports through ISAC, pre and post arrival supports, VRS students can apply, apply to stay in residence or in off-campus housing, depending on their preference. Students are also provided with information from our office to assist in making arrangements for accommodation. So we do provide that support. We don't rely solely on faculty members. So if there, there are students that you're working with that are coming into Saskatoon, who are struggling to find accommodation or need some additional support, please, please get them in touch with us. We have a lot of information about that and, and we wouldn't expect a faculty member to support that student in making those arrangements. Uh, we like to provide that assistance as well. We also have regulated international student immigration advisors. And these RICI, as we call them, are able to advise on matters related to immigration. They're actually the only people on campus that should be providing advice on immigration. So if you are getting questions about immigration, please send them our way so that we can provide them the most accurate direction possible, just to ensure that the immigration process isn't delayed in any way. 
We also send these students our Global Connections newsletter, which contains information for all international students about transition events, social events, uh, and other relevant information to international students. And if there is an emergency or a situation that needs additional support and care, our office is here to provide that support and connect with the appropriate campus services to provide that student support during a time of emergency or time of need as well. So if there are any questions, I can answer those as well. Uh, this is a lot of logistical information that might not apply until students apply and, and are awarded the funding. Uh, but if there are questions, I can answer those. Uh, in terms of contact information, I've put my information up here as well as our general office information. You can essentially contact any of these emails and we'll, we'll direct it appropriately. We're pretty good at that. So um, yeah, if there's any questions right now, I can stop sharing my screen and pass it back to you, Eula. Thank you, Chantel. So yeah, it's so helpful and especially you help us to have a full picture of the all the services support for both inbound and outbound students, especially this with so many things involved, right? With like, like Chris, like a cross culture orientation, like safety planning, and then also logistic support, not that. Um, so yeah, exactly. So for our students and faculty members, you could definitely trust the ISAT team. They will uh, help your student prepare for going out. And then for you, when you invite students from partner institutions, again, they will also receive free support, part uh, arrival and also post arrival as well. So. Again, here we'd like to uh, invite uh, questions and thoughts and from the audience. And also if you have, uh, for instance, if you uh, have any questions for me, perhaps certain countries that you would like to travel to for this internship opportunity, if you have any question around like uh, how to explore that, right? In terms from travel safety perspective, from like a cultural preparation perspective, and then Please feel free to uh, yeah ask questions like as well, and also wanted to mention um, from um, international office website uh, and also is international student study abroad ISAT website we have uh, a map kind of showing all the uh, partners we have. So those are partners who have signed Memorandum of Understanding. So it's a general partnership agreement with USAS as well as a student exchange agreement with us. So those are the formal partners. Sometimes if you're not sure where to start, you can also take a look at the map and then look at the partners in certain countries if you're interested. And then you can further explore, right? Um, at the, for instance, a particular university and then the particular field. If you discover faculty members, you feel like quite aligned with your interests and offer something very unique there. Uh, Cause sometimes we also wanted to encourage students to think that's the unique expertise you can access and also very, uh, very unique research facilities, right? Maybe a very unique research team training environment that attract you. So those are also the factors when you plan your internship. And then also like in terms of the helping reaching out uh, and then you could certainly, uh, as we mentioned earlier, like um, we would be happy to help you connect with uh, some of those uh, partners or uh, don't hesitate to talk to your uh, supervisors here who have suggestions too. So we have a question from Marianne. Uh, had to run to another me. Oh yeah, so thank you for coming to our session. And then after the session, if you have any thoughts to wanted to connect, don't hesitate to write to us. Um, yeah, thanks Merle. <laughs> And then I would like to also quickly mention to um, maybe perhaps uh, Rachel or Shusa. Um, so after the uh, outcome letter, so that's a kind of like uh, providing review feedback, uh, letting kind of informing the applicant this uh, uh, application has been considered for funding or not. Um, so usually after that outcome letter, uh, it still take a few weeks, right, for internal system after receiving the acceptance confirmation from student. And then internally, um, your team will process a formal official award letter and then also financial payment. Usually how, uh, like any recommendation, of course, from our side need to finish like uh, the acceptance confirmation as well as pre-departure 
training right as soon as possible. But are there any other tips in terms of the timeline? Any any suggestion you would like to share? I don't have anything specific. I don't know if Rachel, you have any experience with that. I am no. I I. We haven't, because we don't have the MOU yet, we haven't had a lot of GREs and each one was so different for some reason. The timeline was different for each one. Um, the award letter does take some time sometimes, which is, um, it requires some patience from an <laughs> applicant's uh, point of view. Um, yeah, my text processes thousands of these award letters. <laughs> Uh, uh, every month. So not, not for the GRA, what I mean is um, the signatures are required on the award letters for our Accelerate program, our other programs and everything else. So by the time they process these takes time. Um, I think just whatever we have there, preparing those pre-departure forms and all of that. Um, I don't have anything specific myself. Rachel, do you have any? Yeah, I mean, I think I pretty much agree with what you said. You said, yeah, it will take some time for the award letter and funds to be sent out. Um, but yeah, I would say if you want to speed things up, um, if you can su submit the pre-departure and ethics for the deadline, then that might speed things up because you'll have one less step to do, if that's possible, it might be too early to do the forms now, but if you can, I think that might help a little bit. Um, or if not by the deadline, maybe have it ready so that it's as soon as the outcome comes out, you can send those forms in and then uh, my tax can process it at the same time. Okay, hey, for sure. Yeah, definitely we encourage students, uh, yeah, get those uh, ready. Cause again, yeah, everything takes time, right? Internally to complete international travel registry, right? And then, to complete the uh, MyTax pre departure form and get a sign off, take time. So, if we had that ready, then yes, exactly. That could also help speed up uh, the entire process for sure. We would definitely do yeah, everything on our end too to kind of make sure a right, student can catch the time and then to go like uh, starting the internship in May. Yeah, for sure. Just let's see. Uh, and again, we'd like to invite questions from our audience. and. Um, any thoughts or questions, or maybe you have a, a certain kind of idea in mind, um, please feel free to share with us. Or if you feel like I uh, wanted to connect after the session, feel free to do so too. So we just give a, uh, yeah, a little more time. Oh, thanks Viviana, you're very sweet. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you everyone. And thank you Ola, for organizing this. Thank you Chantal for providing your input. Um, hopefully we'll uh, have quite a few applications using this opportunity. I know that sometimes the travel costs far exceed the $6,000. Some of these opportunities have more than that. Um, so sometimes it's just one of one of two or three sources that will make the, the travel possible. Hopefully we'll be able to help a few. So yeah, please let us know as soon as uh, you can. I know you always tell me if uh, some of these are coming in and we'll be in touch. Yes, yeah, exactly, for sure. And also, as Shusa mentioned, we're fully aware the uh, right now the travel costs, everything really surge. Um, so internally, uh, ICM manager, some student travel funds can try to apply to, and then externally, sometimes depends on the country. For instance, if you travel to Germany, then we could also support you to apply to the German Academic Exchange Services, that DAD to kind of help. Sometimes, as Shusha mentioned, you kind of uh, need to pull sources from various right, kind of domains and then put together to support the travel. And then from my experience, our USAS faculty members sometimes also willing to chip in 
to kind of help provide a little bit of financial support as well. So yeah, so a lot of time I feel like it's to the first step, right? To take initiative, to start this idea, start a conversation, and then we help you to navigate what kind of resources might be available. So it's not that hard, not that difficult. So many people have done that before and travel to different parts of the world, different continents and from different fields. Like, so yeah, never being uh, limited by imagination. Yeah. So if we don't have any further questions, we're gonna to conclude today's session. Uh, please give our speakers a big round of applause and also really appreciate the, the spending time with us and, and co-design this uh, info session and try to really help our research community to be aware of the opportunities to really to take advantage of the partnerships MyTex explore for us, really benefiting our R&D community here. So thanks again, Rachel, Shuzan, and Chantel. <laughs> Thank you, Lloyd, for organizing yeah, this. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you, great honor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.